Hi everyone, I'm Miguel Perez, your professor this semester for LEH 354, Hispanic American History. And this is a crucial orientation lecture for this course. This has always been the first lecture of the semester when this class met in a regular classroom and even after it became an online course, we always began with an in-person orientation meeting where I explained how I developed both the course and this passion that I feel for uh, uncovering our often hidden Hispanic heritage. I frankly, once I tell students how I became involved in teaching Hispanic American history, and once I tell them my own personal story and how this course got started, and I find that they tend to understand the course much better. So let me tell you, I'm a journalist. I've hosted my own radio and TV shows in both English and Spanish for many years. I think I'm a decent photographer too. But first and foremost, I'm a writer, and I don't write fiction. I love to tell true stories. In the late 1970s and all of the 1980s, I was a reporter and columnist for the New York Daily News, and my job was to cover the Hispanic community, the good, the bad, the ugly, all over New York City. Everything from a parade to a supermarket holdup involving Latinos, writing about it was my job, and I was perfectly happy with my life as a journalist. I love being a reporter, yet in ways, little by little, in ways that are still hard to explain. My, my life turned me into a historian. I think it's all based on passion. I never thought anything could top my passion for writing news and covering the U.S. Hispanic community until I discovered my passion for writing history, especially the Hispanic events and contributions that have been whitewashed by American history. I'm not talking about the Caribbean or Central and South America. I'm talking about the many whitewashed Hispanic contributions to what is now the United States. That's what this course is about now. Understand that. The history of U.S. Hispanics. For me, there came a point when U.S. Hispanic history became more important than Hispanic news. But it was a slow process, a very slow process. And it was, believe it or not, the news that led me to the history. Ironically, it was during Hispanic Heritage Month that I began to develop this interest in our hidden Hispanic heritage. Not because of our, how much history we were actually learning that month. And <laughs> no, it was because during that month, as a reporter, I would discover how little Hispanic history we actually knew. After all, my job was to go out and interview people who were marching in various parades every year. And you would think that covering a parade was easy, right? Mm. You would think that interviewing parade marchers would be cool, right? And you would think that they would know why they were marching, what they were celebrating, right? Wrong. Amazingly, parades were always a struggle. As a reporter, you, you're looking for a variety of comments. You don't want everyone telling you the same thing over and over again because you want to avoid repeating the same quotes in your story. But it was always difficult to get a variety of quotes to illustrate my parade stories. I would approach young Latinos who were marching in these beautiful ethnic costumes and I would ask them a very simple question. Why are you here? And I, was all, I would always get the same answer because I'm very, very proud of being Hispanic. Mm. Unfortunately, the next guy and the next person and the next person would tell me exactly the same thing. It was terribly frustrating. Everyone was having a great time and I had two hours to produce a 15 paragraph news story about the parade and all I had was one single quote. I'm very proud of being Hispanic. So why are you proud of being Hispanic? I would insist and much to my amazement, they had nothing more to say. It was as if someone had sippered their lips. Silch! Nada! So that's when I knew we have a huge problem in the Hispanic community. That's when I began to write about how little we know. That's when I began to notice that we threw a lot of Hispanic Heritage Month fiestas between September 15 and October 15. But we learned very few history lessons during that time. I began to see the difference between how Latinos and African Americans celebrate their months, and I soon realized that Black History Month in February is so much more about education than cocktail parties and parades. But then something happened that 
would intensify my interest in U.S. Hispanic history. During one of those Hispanic Heritage Months, I was assigned by the newspaper to interview and write a feature story about a historian who had just received a, a grant to go around the country to research the Hispanic American history. His name was Joe Montserrat. I had already met Montserrat. He was a Puerto Rican educator and a scholar who had led the Hispanic community organizations in New York City and served on the New York City Board of Education. So I set up an interview with Montserrat. I called him at his office, I met him at his office, and I sat down with him and he proceeded to embarrass the hell out of me. Oh, I can just see him. Oh, so you cover the Hispanic community, right? Hmm. So let's see how much you know. Mind you, I was already in my late 20s, and since I grew up in Florida, I had some knowledge of the Ponce de Leon discovery of Florida in 1513 and the establishment of the city of San Agustin in 1565, and I thought I had a moderate amount of knowledge of the history of Spanish presence in what is now the United States. And then Montserrat proceeded to ask me a series of rapid fire questions most of which I could not answer, making me feel exactly like the people who had sipped their lips at the parades. It was a revelation. I had so much more to learn. Mm. So, how much do you know about Ponce de Leon? He said. How about Hernando de Soto or Cabeza de Vaca? How about David Farragut or Bernardo de Galvez? Surely you know about Eusebio Quino, right? How about Junipero Serra? How much do you know about the black legend? Hmm. Montserrat became my teacher and my mentor. After that initial interview, I had him as a frequent guest on my radio and TV shows, on my live talk radio program on Radio Wado. In Spanish, we would talk for three hours, discussions with dozens of callers. On television, when I hosted a half-hour show called Images Imágenes on the New Jersey Network, the producers ran out of the control room after we had finished taping, insisting that Montserrat had to stick around for a second show. They had been so impressed with our discussion that they wouldn't let him leave. I had never seen that happen. Of course, by that time, a decade after our initial interview, I had become a Hispanic history buff myself and a Montserrat disciple. I knew what questions to ask him. That interview and a compilation of the two interviews that we did is on YouTube, and I'll be sending you a link later on in the semester. Montserrat died in 2005 before he finished writing a Hispanic history book he intended to publish. And as his disciple, I've carried the torch to continue shining some light on our hidden Hispanic heritage. Rather than with a book, I've done it with a website, hiddenhispanicheritage.com, which is your online textbook for this semester. Since I was an opinion columnist, able to pick my own topics to write about, I decided that every so often, instead of current events, I would write a history column. I would research a topic, on Hispanic heritage, Hispanic history, and then I would write a column about it. Some of those columns were written for the Bergen Record in New Jersey and some for the National Creator Syndicate. And so they were distributed and published in newspapers all over the country. It was great to get that exposure. Even after I left my full-time job as a journalist and became a full-time journalism professor at Lehman College in 2006. For several years, I continued writing my syndicated opinion column, including many more history articles. My history series was up to 27 parts when I gathered them all together and launched HiddenHispanicHeritage.com in 2012. But I was teaching only journalism, both writing and news writing and TV production courses. I even became chairman of the journalism department. And yet my passion for Hispanic history kept pulling me in a different direction. As a journalist, I felt it wasn't enough to just read about historic places. I had to go out and do some of my own reporting, and then write my own history chapters. 
As I wrote in the column, I want to see the relics left by my great grand Spanish ancestors. I want to follow their trails. I want to visit the towns that have been named by them and the monuments built to recognize their great accomplishments. I want to pray in the churches they built. So in 2014, with the goal of expanding my series and creating a university level course based on my website, Lehman College gave me a leave of absence so I could go on a cross-country road trip to visit dozens of Hispanic heritage sites, just like Montserrat had done. I call my journey the Great Hispanic American History Tour, and you will follow my tour later on this semester. Hmm. By the time I finished reporting on my tour, my series was up to 76 parts. And then in 2015, I wrote four more columns from Washington, D.C. And in the spring of 2017, while still teaching journalism, I created and began to teach this course, U.S. Hispanic History, based on 80 parts at that time. However, in the summer of 2018, I went back on the road for my California road trip and expanded my series to 107 parts. In 2019, I retired from my full-time job as a journalism professor, but I kept teaching my history class, which I then converted into an online course so that I could continue traveling to historic places I have not yet visited. And then COVID-19 came along. Other courses had to switch to an online format in a hurry, but this class was already online and was not affected. My trips, however, are a different story. I've had to delay them several times, and I'm hoping to hit the road again when this semester is over. So now you should have a better idea of what this course is about, and by the end of the semester, you will know how to answer all of Montserrat's questions with ease, and you will wonder, as I did, why no one taught you these lessons before.